Today we're talking Vaporum, a kind of cool name for a not really cool game. Hey, what's up everyone? Game Dad here, and I am back with another mini game review. And today I am taking a look at Vaporum for the Nintendo Switch. Now, full transparency, I was sent the code for this game, but that does not affect my opinion in the game whatsoever, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Now, before we dive into this review, if you are new to the channel or you just haven't yet, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below, as well as that little notification bell so that you can alert every time I've got a new video coming out. Now, let's talk Vaporum. When I first saw screens and a little bit of footage of this game, I thought, I mean, it looked great. It, it looked like it would be a really cool, like, you know, one of those random kind of game titles you pick up off the shelf, and it seems like some random third-party nonsense you've never heard of, but would actually be kind of fun. And I will say, at first, it was that, but it went quickly downhill from there. So, let's talk visuals for Vaporum the Lockdown. On the surface, I mean, the game, it's it's really nice looking, actually. It's got some really nice textured graphics, and it didn't really feel like it would be some sort of, you know, random trash you would pick up. It was actually really nice looking. But just because something is nice looking doesn't mean it actually has good visuals. There was a lot of repetitive textures, and the overall animations of things were very 1990s in my mind. Think Mist, but with slightly updated graphics that made it look like it was more of a 3D game and less like realistic stuff trying to be brought into a 3D world. The initial visuals kind of gave me a Bioshock vibe, where everything was kind of dark and damp, and it had that very, not necessarily steampunk vibe to it, but it looked kind of just mechanical and industrial. But looks aside, that's honestly where the game kind of went downhill for me. Because, let's be honest, it doesn't matter how pretty the game is or how nice and updated the graphics are, if the game is only skin deep, then that's probably not a very good thing. Now, the sound in Vaporum is pretty much just what you would expect. You hear some mechanical and industrial sounds, and that was kind of it. There wasn't really any kind of soundtrack to speak of. I mean, it, it helped create kind of the atmosphere and stuff like that, so that part was okay. But overall, it's not like there was some really nice music or any kind of stuff like that going on in the background. It felt pretty empty from an audio standpoint. And honestly, in a game that looks the way that it does, I would have really expected there to be some really, like, you know, solid mood-setting ambient music or something going on in the background to really give you the feel like you are in this like industrial, mechanical, underground kind of area, and the sound just really didn't do that for me. So, so far, the game looks pretty, but the sound doesn't really keep you engaged in what you're looking at and what's going on around you. So, surely the gameplay must be the saving grace for this game, right? Well, no. I was trying to give this game kind of the benefit of the doubt, seeing as it wasn't something that was some major AAA title or something like that. It really was kind of that, you know, take the dust off of it on the shelf and put it in and see if it is a fun game. And unfortunately, the gameplay is just not there in my opinion. You do not have free roam controls, even though you are in a seemingly open environment. Now. I don't mean that it's like a big open world or anything like that. Definitely not. It felt very linear, but it gives you open environments to explore in. But the way that you move around is, you know, you go left or right and it does 90 degree turns. It felt very tank control, but from a first person perspective. And right off the bat, that got really annoying really fast because you would have to 90 degree turn, then go forward. Then, if you wanted to see what was behind you, two 90 degree turns going back the other way. And then you would have to move forward. And it was very blocky and movement was just very cumbersome and really not fun to play. I will say, though, that the story was definitely something that was grabbing me from the beginning. It wasn't something where I thought, you know, oh, I'm going to go put 50 hours into this game. But it was something that was grabbing me enough to keep me interested in trying to find out what was happening next. 
the game would give little tidbits of information that way you could start piecing together what was happening in the beginning of it and what you needed to do next. But I've got to admit, I tried putting in about three, four hours into this game and after that initial like, okay, this is kind of interesting, where is this going to lead? It just kind of faded out because it was the same old gameplay over and over again. Go find this object, do the thing with this object, move on to the next thing. And it was all done while making constant 90 degree turns and moving in blocks. And comparing it to other modern games where you get free roam wherever you are, it just, it wasn't that fun. There was a series of games that did this very well in the 90s, and that's the Myst franchise. And that was very interesting. Had a great story, kept you on your toes. This feels like a watered down version of that, unfortunately. So while the story did kind of grab me in the beginning, it was just something that couldn't sustain and couldn't keep me wanting to come back for more because the gameplay was just really obnoxious, honestly. Now, for the overall aesthetics of Vaporum, I really liked it, actually. I did like the overall like steampunky kind of vibe that I got from it, but it wasn't something that was strong enough to keep me coming back. It wasn't something that was strong enough that I wanted to continue playing it for hours on end because it just wasn't that interesting in my opinion. Now, I'm not sure if this developer has done other games and what those games might be like, but for this one, it just, it really didn't do it for me. On the surface, the game looks great. Graphically, it looks pretty nice. It's not AAA tier, but it's pretty nice overall. Sound, they got a lot of work to do there in my opinion because it just, it didn't help create a mood at all. It was relying too heavily on just the visuals to get that mood and that message across. And then the storytelling overall was just kind of mediocre in my opinion. So overall, what do I think about Vaporum? It's very okay. It's not that great of a game in my opinion. And normally I don't do like rating scales or anything on a game, but I mean, this one, it just, I feel like I need to. And if I had to rate this game out of 10, honestly, I would probably give it like a four, maybe. Uh, if I was being generous, maybe a five. And that's just because it, it tries to do a couple of things really well, but kind of misses the mark on it. And then the other stuff, in my opinion, it just doesn't do it well. Now, if they were able to update the controls and actually allow free roam, that would make a huge improvement on the overall experience for the game. And if they just added some audio, I mean, just something more than basic sound effects, some sort of ambient music to really help set the mood, I think it would go a long way in helping to get that visual message across that it looks, in my opinion, like they were trying to do. But overall, like I said, it's just okay. It's a very meh game in my opinion. I will say though, thank you to the developer for sending me a code, that way I can check it out. But again, all thoughts and opinions in this video are my own. And unfortunately, I don't think very highly of this game. So bottom line, would I recommend it to somebody? No, I, I really wouldn't. This would definitely not fall under something where I would tell people, hey, you know, you might check it out, give it a try. It's just Eh, if, if you come across it, sure, maybe. Now, if y'all liked today's video, please let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so that you can alert every time I've got a new video coming out. Also, if you are interested in supporting the channel, please be sure to head over to patreon.com slash gamedadshow, or be sure to check us out at tpublic.com slash gamedadshow, where we have a couple different t-shirt designs available. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you later.